I actually have, if it's all right, I can show you what, what yeah, we have Yeah, go ahead. Today. I want to see him. Yeah, yeah for sure. This is Marco, <laughs> the mental health assisting robot companion. So he's, um, I can't legally say like a robot therapist, but it's it's the quickest way to kind of visualize what it does. It sits with clients 24-7. Um, they can turn it on anytime, talk about what they're dealing with. If it's something high risk, it escalates it back to a human provider. And they're also able to monitor and enforce treatment plans remotely to make sure that, you know, clients are actually getting the the support they need. Um, and we kind of figured out what it actually had to do and everything over, you know, a few months, I had like a month to put together a prototype for this um, competition. And I think what really drove me the most was one of our team members left because she didn't believe in the idea. Our advisor left and said, you'll never like succeed with this. And just kind of that, like, you can't do this as well as it being like a really close to home problem was what really like drove me to put everything into getting this off the ground. And we did actually win. Um, and that was enough money to kind of kick off and start growing from there. Uh, it hasn't been like a walk of Daisy <laughs> for sure over the past six years doing it. Um, but at least like every, I haven't really had to question that what I'm doing was important or meaningful just based on the impact we've seen from the people who we we've been able to help. Yeah. Can I, can I see it one more time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's I can uh, maybe. also yeah. turn him on. Maybe we can ask can him you, some questions. Yeah. Can you give us a little like demo anything. or something? That'd be cool. Can yeah. we ask him a question or something? Uh, we can uh, try. I can, if it's not, you know, if you don't have anything, like if it's not going to work or something, it's fine. We're just, you know. <laughs> no, he, he should. I, I was just, um, I just get nervous whenever I have like a day where I'm doing development on it because then I don't know if I broke something. Don't worry. If it doesn't work, it. we'll cut it out. It's not a big deal. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no we're, not gonna, yeah. we're not going to ask you to do a demo or something. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just he'll, he'll get up. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Well, oh, okay. We'll, we'll make him wake up. He, he kind of reminds me of, you know, Baymax. Have you seen that movie? Big Hero 6. Is, is that what it's called? Big Hero 6? I think. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. The movie. We'd yeah. love to yeah. say. Marco is like a, a real life Baymax for your mental health. Huh, um, that's cool, man. Does it have like fabric on it? Hey there, Steve. Yep. Winding down after a long day? I can help you de stress if you ask for a meditation, a de stress activity, or my scavenger hunt. But anyway, to start, please tell me how you're feeling today. Can you hear him okay? Yeah. 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 Not too bad. Yeah. He is, um, he is plush because um, it's meant to be like friendly, approachable, and everything. Yeah. Um, it comes cool. with a, a screen. I'm just like running it off my okay. phone right now, but we usually mm -hmm. have like a nice big, like 10 inch tablet for, especially if you have like, say a child with autism or a senior citizen who can't really see as well and whatnot. It's, um, uh, a great medium and oh, that's uh, great, yeah. the AI of Marco, the session with it is structured after a session with a human therapist. So the same way, like if you go in, you expect like the same kind of routine each time you have a session, there's the check in how are you doing today there's we'll talk about your problems and, and kind of get them all out and get everything out in the air and then we'll we'll spend some time like practicing an exercise or skill that's actually going to help you based on your specific situation so the same way here um i could say like i'm feeling super anxious right now how strongly do you feel anxious very much so could you tell me why you're feeling very anxious? I'm on a podcast. <laughs> I always just get nervous <laughs> about these things. Don't worry, Steve. Everyone gets nervous before a podcast. Wow. Just take a deep breath and you'll be great. Thank you for your understanding and support. It means a lot to me to work with your anxious feelings. Sure, being here to talk is what I'm here for. But were you thinking, like, you want to talk to me as a friend tell me what's going on then we go and play a game or do something fun to take your mind off things or were you thinking more of talking to me like a coach or counselor to get some more heavy duty help for your mental health yeah so sorry i was tapping a few things on the screen just because if we did a, a full session that would be like the whole <laughs> uh, yeah. podcast. that's well, it's right. great it seemed to have given really good advice i think i think i was going to tell you the same thing you know to <laughs> even to, understood to relax don't have to worry you know it's yeah. just a conversation <laughs> so yeah. is this connected to the internet at all times or yeah um while there are is some capability for like offline um 
we try to keep it as low cost as possible. So we sell these for just under 500 US dollars um, online. Um, and we're trying to bring the cost down with other like lower cost models as well. Um, so to do that, you know, since we don't want to put a huge, powerful computer inside the robot, um, everything is cloud connected. So that way it has access to all the, you know, supercomputer AI we can make available for the best possible care. Hmm. Maybe let's get into that. Like what, what kind of like programming is involved in that? And it's kind of like the uh, engineer and me talking here, but uh, <laughs> like, what, yeah, what goes into that? You know, it must be like pretty involved to, to give like those pretty accurate responses. Yeah. So basically what's going on behind the scenes is um, in the actual conversational side of it, like letting alone like the interface and like the programming of its eyes and, and movement and everything like the core value obviously comes from the talking. So there are basically three AI algorithms that power Marco's conversations. Um, and um, one of them is basically analyzing everything that's coming in that's being said. And, you know, the psychotherapy model that Marco uses is called cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm not sure if that's a familiar term or it's the core model. It, Marco uses a few different therapeutic models, but that's the the main one. Um, and the idea is, right, all of our feelings are linked to thoughts um, that we have about situations that also those feelings then drive our behaviors and those thoughts drive our behaviors. So uh, everything that I'm saying to Marco going in, it analyzes and says, well, this is what you're thinking, feeling, doing, and these, these are the events that are happening that's causing this. Um, based on that, then there is a second um, AI. It's, it's very rudimentary, but it's important um, in, in what kind of differentiates Marco from other ones out there. While therapy is like a very qualitative uh, practice instead of quantitative, like if you're treating someone with a, a mental disorder versus you're treating someone with like a, let's just say cancer, like a, a physical illness that can be quantified and measured and, you know, like account from your blood or like a scan of your arm or brain or, or whatever it may be. There is not all of, as much of that in psychotherapy, but there are still um, rules uh, in terms of like, this is how a session flows. This is what's a good way to, talk to your client under different situations. So the second AI algorithm is basically like this giant flow chart of rules that based on what's being said and other, you know, metadata about where are we in the conversation? Where are we in our relationship? Like, is this your first session or your second or your 32nd? Um, and all these other things, it's going to put somewhere in a different rule on this giant flow chart map. And that's where the third AI algorithm comes in, which is the generative one. So instead of, you know, what some companies take the approach of, of just like feeding tons of data into essentially the next chat GPT or a custom GPT or, or whatever it may be, and hoping that it's going to nail uh, a conversation just based on what it's seen before, we're taking the approach of, you know, there's already tons of handbooks and guides on how to run a therapy session. Here's the rules. And then taking that like hyper specialized GPT and saying, all you have to do is, um, personalize the way you're saying these things. So when I, when he was talking about the podcast, right, there were rules for getting me to like, we just took the baseline assessment and it was instead of just saying like, take a guess on where you are in the conversation and, and respond. It's here's your exact instructions for this point in the conversation. Here's what Jacob said, or Steve, the character I was playing <laughs> with Marco. And that's like, respond to that based on these instructions. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So why is it called Marco? Uh, it's an acronym. Uh, pretty much every robot in the world, <laughs> their name is an acronym, whether or not uh -huh. you know it. So it stands for, uh, originally it stood for the mentally assistive robot companion, but we had a, a brilliant marker who said mentally assistive sounds horrible and no one is going to want that. So it's the mental health hyphenated. So it's just an M <laughs> okay. assisting robot companion. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah, it's a good name. Still works. I mean, yeah. Marco, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it's more like catchy and uh, easy to remember. It's It originally was uh, Philbot, the psycho psychological health interactive liaison bot, um, which I, I don't know about you, not as great as Marco, I think. Um, we had to scrap it I like Marco mainly better, because, 
it was the name of a, a one-off robot being used to bring a child with leukemia to school and we definitely oh, even if it wasn't trademark we definitely couldn't steal it from that kid oh you could have used that name yeah yeah interesting yeah okay but yeah. i mean yeah the way it spoke i mean uh very interesting i just want to know so like the answers it gives so it has some sort of set um answers that it follows like like set guidelines that it follows or it's not like gp because because you know gpt is very popular now and people are like oh is it kind of like that you know i just like i talk to it and then it like derives you know the answer based on a bunch of data that it's gathered but it yeah, has certain so guidelines that it follows it's it's a mix of both so for instance um especially when we deal with higher risk topics Hmm. everything has to be like scripted we can't trust an ai at this point in time that if someone is dealing with like suicidal thoughts that it's going to handle that properly like there are ways and questions you have to ask and ways you have to handle that situation um that require like pre-scripted responses and those pre-scripted rules of what to do depending on the answers um more generally there are like the the chat. We don't use exactly chat GPT because we found it a little unsafe for our purposes. Um, but we use similar type models at the, you know, if it's not as critical a situation, you know, those rules just kind of guide how it should talk at this point in the conversation. So for instance, in um, therapy, there's the, this concept of micro skills, which is like, how do you say things at a, at certain times so there's things like content reflection versus feeling reflection saying back to the client like is this how am i understanding this correctly that you you know you lost your job and that's why you're feeling you know particularly depressed and thinking you're worthless then there's um like empathy like i totally understand why that sucks versus challenging which is like now hold on a second you just said that you're worried you don't have enough time to do your homework this week but then you're also planning on spending three hours tonight you know on tiktok or, or whatever it may be so there's all these different skills that are oftentimes unspoken but are you know parts of effective delivering of therapy as well as different phases of what that therapy session looks like there's the information gathering there's the um you know discussion and and whatnot so all of those kind of inform how we you know the term is like prompt engineering how we instruct the AI to respond at that certain point in time, as well as have like a smaller data set of these are good responses and these are good inputs and whatnot to trigger this. So it's not a, a massive GPT type model. It's a ton of smaller GPT type models in this giant web of instructions of when you should use this one versus that one. Mm, that's okay. interesting. Yeah. These large language model things are very powerful and, as we sometimes. could see, you know, with just that, what were you going to say? No, yeah, the la large language models can, you know, go off on, you know, like they say, hallucinate or start saying things that are not huh. correct. And, uh, yeah. yeah. But just to ask, like, uh, can people expect a personalized experience as if, you know, oh, this, you know, robot knows me kind of and, uh, or, or, or is it like generic kind of with everyone with the way it answers, uh, it it's meant to be as as personalized as possible, and there's a number of different layers. So it, it often will frequently um, refer back to previous sessions and say, you know, this is what we talked about last time. How oh, are you okay. doing today on that? And if I bring up, say, an issue with, um, let's just say my my friend that I've brought up before, it can reference that and say, oh, well, this is um, this is what you said last time, and I say it's still happening. As well as, you know, in some of like the activities and whatnot, it'll get to know me, what I'm interested in, what really helps me when I need to calm down or feel better about myself and, and keep bringing back those, you know, I guess, greatest hits, if you think of it. Or if it knows I'm in, if Marco knows I'm interested in a certain hobby or, or favorite animal or, you know, just general interests and whatnot, it can pull up content related to that as part of the, you know, part of the fair. So it can be very personalized. I'm not going to say it's it's 100%, especially not right off the bat as it's getting to know you. But as you go and, and Marco learns more about you, the more personalized it'll get. 